Warriors rise. <laughs> Ripple mentioned with Goldman Sachs once again. We're going to break this down, but you know we always go a little bit deeper, give you facts, figures, numbers, logic, and show you how the spider web works to bring you into the quantum financial system. And there'll never be a time like this in our human history again to be involved in the biggest shift in our financial system. My name is Coach JB. I am the top health, mindset, and crypto coach in the world. Remember what you believe in your heart, you think in your mind will eventually become your words and become your reality. If you can see it in your mind, eventually you can hold it right here in your hands. What you repeatedly do gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious mind becomes an unconscious activity. If you want access to my portfolio, access to our 13 team members, over 100 cryptocurrency courses to help you manage into this new quantum financial system, click right here, 3T Warrior Academy. Excuse me, click the description down below, 3TWarrior.com, or you can join our free Discord. Just click the description down below in this video. So let's dive right into it, Warriors. We're going to get down and dirty today. Okay, so check this out. That was weird, down and dirty, but we're going to get into it. So Ripple identifies identified as opportunity in payments alongside Circle and Goldman Sachs by Goldman Sachs, excuse me. So this broke yesterday. And as things break, I take my time to digest things. Um, I used to just break off with breaking news, but I like to digest it. I like to go a little bit deeper and I like to make sure that what I'm presenting has facts, figures, numbers, logic. So this was presented by, um, this is a really good, um, you today has a lot of great information out there. And you can see this document here, but I do want to give credit to as well, this gentleman, Raf of uh, Henman, you can see him right here. Uh, he broke this and he actually was able to get us the document. So I'm going to take a little bit deeper. Okay. So I went out here, I found him and then I found the document through his Twitter page. So congratulations. And thank you for that. Okay. So let's go back here. So ripple was identified at with circle alongside, uh, with by Goldman Sachs, but we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this. Okay. So this is, that's page 23. So this right here is the overview of digital assets and blockchain, November, 2021. So we're going to move to page 22. That's floating around everywhere here, or I think it was 23. Okay. We're going to open this up just a little bit here. Okay. So this is the financial infrastructure of distributed ledger technology projects by use case. Okay. So there's a lot of YouTubers out there. A lot of people coming at me on TikTok saying that um, I'm incorrectly guiding people into Ripple. You got to understand words. I like Ripple and XRP, XLM, and cryptocurrencies like that because I understand how banking works. I understand that Ripple is going to be part of the solve, not just XRP, but the actual company is going to be part of the solve. Think about that for just a moment. I believe R3, I, dove, I always dive deep into consensus with you guys. There's Hyperledger, all these different things that are all included in their document right here, but let's take a deep dive. So this is the capital markets infrastructure of distributed letter technology for the capital markets. And this is what they brought to their people, okay? So payment systems, and this is where the, the web description that I talk about comes into play. People keep asking me, is R3 gonna knock uh, Ripple out? They're kind of in a different category if you think about it. Payments, Ripple, Tether, Circle, Gemini. You go down to infrastructure, protocols, DLTs, and frameworks, R3. Consensus, very, very important. Consensus is deep. Ethereum is deep in consensus. Hyperledger, Corda. Okay, do these sound familiar to you? You go into post trade, you have Coinbase, BitGo. Think about it. these are all the different sections that are going to bring the spider web and ecosystem together to bring in the new quantum financial system. You got other infrastructures over to the side here. You got XFIN, you got XDC. Okay, you got the primary markets over here. You got the secondary markets. You have the end-to-end -end platforms that take you across the whole ecosystem. Remember, guys, we're going into the new quantum financial system. They even have crypto.com in here. So a bunch of my investments are in here, Warriors. Think about that for just a moment. So I wouldn't say a bunch, but you got Ripple was one of my key investments here. You got a lot of ISO 20,022 cryptocurrencies connecting and infrastructure connecting the quantum financial system. That's really important to understand. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper here where they mention Ripple as one of the payment systems here. So they actually have a whole slide with Circle, Coinbase, and Ripple. So it says the opportunity in payments accelerating use cases. 
So uh, Circle is accepting payments with legacy rails that settle in digital currency. Ripple banks join RippleNet to process cross-border payments in real time with end-to-end -end tracking and certainty. Available in 55 countries across six continents, RippleNet makes it easy to connect and transact across a robust network of financial institutions. With RippleNet, financial institutions can expand payment offerings into new markets and otherwise difficult and expensive to reach. So I've told you guys, if you watch my videos, there's three ways that banks make money, capital markets, fee income, okay, capital markets, fee income and interest income. All of those are being squeezed right now. Liquidity is being squeezed right now. So it allows them to create new revenue models, lower costs, consistent experience, which the best in customer service is going to be the ones that win, and one point integration. So they can easily integrate these banks at a very, very low cost and move money at the speed of light. Okay. Got Coinbase. We know all about Coinbase. We know they're connected to the banking cartel in the cryptocurrency space. Okay. So we have Goldman Sachs talking about Ripple, Circle, and many other spider web technologies and infrastructures. Okay. So I'm not the person who's saying one's going to be here and the other one's not going to be here. I'm focused on the infrastructure, facts, figures, numbers, logic, not on YouTubers and TikTokers fighting you in, fighting you out of cryptocurrency. I have a fundamental portfolio that you can see in our academy. If you look at Circle, we know they're connected to MasterCard, Visa, Plaid. Okay. We go to RippleNet. We got um, all uh, Santander. You got uh, SA, SABB, Bank of America, American Express. So these guys are working together to change the infrastructure of our financial system. You know, I want to go a little bit deeper. So let's jump into this. I've showed you guys already the 26 Goldman Sachs alumni who run the world. I'd highly recommend you look this up. There's 26 people that are from Goldman Sachs that are spread across the financial system globally that are helping run the government and the infrastructure of how the system works, okay? But let's dive into this, okay? I wanna go a little bit deeper and help you understand in regards to banking, why this is so important. And when people say that Ripple's gonna disappear, XRP is going away, all this stuff, that this R3 is gonna crush XRP, they're, or Ripple, they're all working together. Please understand that. This is important. Systemically important financial institutions, okay? This is Wikipedia. So it's very important to understand, as of November 2010, Basel Committee the, of the Banking Supervision, the BCBS, introduced a new guidance known as Basel III that also specifically targets SIFIS. The main focus of the Basel III guidance is to increase capital market requirements to introduce capital surcharges, okay, for GSIFIS. However, some of the economists warned in 2012 that the tighter Basel III capital regulation, which is primarily based on risk-weighted assets, may further negatively affect the stability of the financial system. Okay, So Basel III came in last, last year. I brought this to you guys last year. This is what they're talking about. Basel III, banks have to hold physical gold on reserves to have riskier assets. Now remember, their capital markets are being squeezed. If you can't have riskier assets, that lowers your ability to profit. So you have to have physical gold, narrative, gold on deposit. So they're bringing us back to a gold back type standard. Russia pumped up their gold. China pumped up their gold, right? Think about that for just a moment. So Basel III changed the banking requirements, is crushing the small banks. So distributed ledger technology and this infrastructure that we're looking at right here Right. Let's go back to page. What was it here? This infrastructure that we're staring at right here is what's going to change and keep the liquidity going. OK, they're just going to move the casino over to the capital markets, which is going to run on a primary markets are going to be on block. Everything's going to be on blockchain. Everything's going to be on blockchain. OK, now let's go back to the systemically important financial institutions. So which companies are deemed systemically important and what's the definition of that? The definition. OK, these are companies that could, if they collapse, they would collapse the whole financial system, okay? And this is what I want you to think about when people are trying to fudge you out of cryptocurrency like XRP or XLM or any of these cryptocurrencies. I want you to think about the connections that they have. If you're a systemically important bank, do you think that the government or somebody at the top of the house is gonna allow you to work with a company that's going to be collapsed by the SEC? Okay, let's name some of the systemically important banks. Bank of America, Bank of China, Bank of New York Mellon, Barclays, BBVA, BNB. Okay, let's go back. Wells Fargo is here. Okay, Bank of China, 
JP Morgan Chase, Mitsubishi. Some of these are going to really sound familiar in just a moment to you. Santander, HSBC, ING Bank. Are any of these ringing a bell to you? You got Santander. There's two different Santanders here. Okay, so I'm just going to go into a little bit of the systemically important banks that are connected to Ripple. Standard Charter, complete strategic investment in Ripple, systemically important bank. Bank of America lifts lid on Ripple partnership, systemically important bank. Systemically, if the bank collapses, it'll collapse the system. You think they're going to allow them to partner with technologies, being Ripple a company, if it was going to collapse or it wasn't going to be worth anything? Think about that. When Ripple IPOs, Warriors, it's going to be massive, massive, massive. So imagine owning the gold mine and the gold, which is XRP. Imagine holding the gold mine and the gold, which is XRP. It's very, very interesting times, Warriors. HSBC executive and SWIFT board members join Ripple to support continued growth. HSBC executive and SWIFT board members join Ripple to support continued growth. MUFG joins Ripple Global Payment Steering Group. These are the biggest systemically important banks, some of the biggest systemically important banks that are part of Ripple or have board of directors on the part of Ripple. We have three people on the board of directors for Ripple that came from the treasury, okay? Goldman Sachs is announcing or mentioning Ripple, Circle, all these companies right here. Think about that for just a moment. There's a systemic change. I'm slowing down because I really want you to understand that because, you know, there's there's people, I, I, they call them, I call them clout chasers, right? There's somebody like, you know, they are three, and this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm like, I'm just showing you facts, figures. Do you guys see R3 on here right there? Do you see consensus? Do you see Hyperledger? Do you see Ripple? Do you see Circle? Do you see Tether? Do you see Crypto.com? Do you see the companies that you know, like, and trust in the cryptocurrency space? Do you see them all separated and working different? Or do you see them all together on one sheet here? You see XFIN right there. You see Tezos. You see all these cryptocurrencies that we've all trusted, that we've all invested in, that we've all really made good decisions, that we're holding strong like a tick on a dog, understanding that this is the new ecosystem. This is where we're going. There are thousands and thousands of cryptocurrencies. The fact is, most of them aren't going to be here, Warriors. That's a fact. Most of the cryptocurrencies are not going to be here. The key for you is to understand how to navigate the system and make sure that you're invested in the ones that are going to last the lifetime, or at least our lifetime. So how do you pick winners and losers? What I do is I look at fundamentals. I'm like a Warren Buffett-style investor. I look at the leadership team. I look at the actual marketing team. I look at, do the, do the, does the team show their face, first of all? I look at the board of directors. Where did they come from? Why are they connected to them? And what, what, what is the deep interweb of the connection? I look at their actual technology. I look at their product of, uh, their suite of products. I look to see if the company is going to IPO, like Ripple, I believe right after the case is going to IPO. And I'm actually getting into the pre-IPO. Think about that. I'll be announcing that to our Warrior Academy on Thursday. We're giving them ask us if you're an accredited investor. Your goal is to become accredited investor, Warriors. There's never been a time like this in history. Never been a time like this in history where you can quickly and efficiently become an accredited investor to change your whole family's life. So as we look at this screen here, it's a web warriors. It's not linear. It's not solo. It's not just R3. It's not just consensus. It's not just hyperledger. It's not just quarter. It's not just ripple. It's not just circle. That's why I've never been tribal about anything. If you believe something, I believe you, but what I believe in is my fundamental portfolio that I've worked very, very hard to create. I'm holding long-term. I have an exit strategy. If it goes up, I exit the market at price points. If it goes down, I don't trip, I buy the dip. Very simple. I don't make it super complex. I'm in this for the long-term warriors. But I want you to realize this for a second. You are part of an elite group of people. You realize there's 7 billion people in the world? And there's a very small group of us focused on this right now. So I want you to lift your head up high, whole warrior. I want your chest proud because you are a true warrior that's actually taking some sort of action. It doesn't matter if you're driving Uber right now. I was driving Uber for, like, what, three years ago. I'd lost everything. But I put my chest high, proud, and I went after it, warriors. And I changed my whole life in three years. You can do the exact same thing.
This is the greatest time in human history. Let's stop focusing on Will Smith smacking Chris Rock and let's get our shit together and start activating and taking that time that we're watching Chris Rock and Will Smith play their freaking weird life out on national television and idolizing these people. And let's put some research and distribute it through technology and your banking system switching and protecting your family and the fact that we're coming out of a liquidity crisis and a food crisis coming up. Where are you going to be when that hits Warriors? I'm going to be here to support you every single day. I love you. I appreciate you. As we always say, Warriors, ah, let's get your shit together. Let's go.